what's up guys welcome to another division 2 build video today's video is going to be my top three pvp builds that i use on a day-to-day -day basis i use these builds every day when i play the division or whenever i pvp these builds have already been released on my channel all of them will be linked in the description that's why i'm not going to go through too much gameplay uh, because you guys if you do watch my streams i use these builds all the time if you would like to go to my twitch channel to see more gameplay over the last couple of days i've used these builds so many times so link will be in the description for my twitch channel just go watch one of the previous vods videos you guys can see all the gameplay you would like to see so the first build we're going to talk about is actually the one that i haven't posted uh, in a while because i have recently updated this and i wanted to share this with you guys the first build is not going to be really uh, focused towards console players now you would probably stick more to uh, vigilance and critical hit damage rather than what i'm going to show you now so let's get into the first build the first build is going to be my best well my assault rifle build with unbreakable and concussion this is what i use for 1v1s what i use for just general gameplay when i would like to use an assault rifle um, up close so let's have a look at the specialization quickly uh, firewall specialization because of the striker shield we really do want to utilize the shield's power. I know a lot of guys do not like to use shields. You don't have to, but it's just you will lose some fights if you don't use a shield. It protects you against body shot gamers as well. The armor kit, need I say more? It's just one of the best things in the game. It gives you 200% armor and health over 10 seconds. Very, very strong. Obviously, we have got assault rifle damage on. Let's take a look. This build, I've updated it, and it's almost completely min-maxed just for one more roll on the holster. I have spec'd more into headshot damage than critical hit damage. I try to keep it balanced to a certain degree. I've been tweaking this for months now and I found the perfect combination, really the perfect amount of each uh, statistic. I have 1v1'd some of the best players in the world with this build and I have won. Funny enough, the first guy actually made a video about me trying to say that I'm a trash player. Well, clearly you can see who the better player is, seeing as though he cannot even beat me in a 1v1 and I play way less time than he does. So I found that quite funny, but just goes to show how powerful this build can be. I have lost some fights to people who have got a similar build with 1.3. I guess it depends can you hit all of your shots and do you want a bit more survivability as i play solo i might even go 1.7 but i feel like this is in between so let's take a look it's going to be a very simple build except i want to escalate my headshot damage now it's important to take note that critical hit damage and headshot damage are exactly the same thing when you crit so if i'm shooting you in the head or let's say for example the dummy in the base operations uh, firing range if i put 10 percent headshot damage and 10% crit damage. When I crit, both values give me the, exactly the same number. But when you're not critting to the head, you're getting higher damage numbers when you spec into headshot damage. Therefore, the 40% uh, of, let's say we've got 60% crit chance, the 40% of the bullets that are not critting will still be doing elevated damage due to the headshot damage because I'm always trying to go for headshots. That's why it's always the best, always better to go for headshots in PvP in the Division 2. So that's why this build just works perfectly in 1v1s if I can hit my shots. And it's obviously a very difficult build to use. But if you can master this, you will never lose. It's all about timing. When do you time your shot? You wait for the other person to fire and then you fire back. Get up close with the FAMAS. This is the best, uh, th this is the best assault rifle for close range PvP. I've tested everything uh, so many times. Uh, for longer ranges, the FAL is better. The AK is one of the, the better uh, weapons. To be honest, the AK does more damage up close than the FAL and it almost beats the FAMAS. So the FAMAS for close range, the damage is just unmatched. The FAL or AKM for medium to long range. Uh, you can use the police M4 as well. Some of those uh, assault rifles are, are very good, but like I said, this is the one I like to use and it's easy to control the recoil. The Eagle Bearer is also very good, but the recoil is a bit more difficult to control. So what I've done is I've modified this with critical hit chance because we want to try to get our crit chance with this build to above 50%. That's the goal. You don't need to have 60% crit because we're not focusing on crit damage, but it is still a good idea to get your critical hit chance up. So crit chance, modifications all there. Then pistol, whatever you would like. Uh, let's have a look at the build. So we've got one piece Fenris before that base assault rifle damage. Crit chance, crit damage with armor. Very nice. Then we've got Providence, two piece for that crit chance because you want to be able to achieve a crit chance easily so it's good to get on it uh, to get it up 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 there without having to spec your modifications into it because as you can see i've put headshot damage as my modification so headshot crit damage weapon damage also the mod here i'd put headshot damage 
holster grupo now this is just to get my crit damage up because i'm not going to always hit headshots so this is kind of to try and get my crit damage up there that's why i'm saying it's not completely headshot uh, focused but it is mainly a headshot assault rifle build so we've got crit damage and crit chance there. You can have headshot damage if you would like instead of crit damage, but we do get the one piece crit damage. It's just one of the best for us. Do not use Walker Harris. Walker Harris is not very strong right now in PvP. The two piece is decent with shotguns, but I don't recommend it too much. The backpack, Providence, two piece. Concussion, very strong with crit damage, headshot damage, another headshot damage modification, and weapon damage. Then we've got concussion. Headshots increase total weapon damage by 10% for 1.5 seconds now a lot of people think that it gives you headshot damage it does not it is weapon damage and it's quite significant so headshot kills increase total weapon damage by 15 percent for 10 seconds yes this does stack so that is going to be uh, 25 percent the same as vigilance so that's why this is good and guess what if you get shot you still keep the buff but you obviously have to get a kill first so that 10 percent is always going to be there and you still get the damage because it only applies for five seconds with marks and rifles all other weapons it's 1.5 seconds which is more than enough when you're using a fast fire rate weapon so the gloves contractors and foxes prayer with headshot damage here and then critical hit chance over there now it's important that i use the emp sticky and the uh, striker shield to give me more damage it's significant damage put damage and health mods there and you can put whatever you want your skill haste is quite good as well then statistics let's take a look so 52 percent crit chance like i said uh it's it it's difficult to you know to try and balance this out there are many ways you can do it but i found 50 crit damage uh sorry 50 crit chance 100 crit damage and 160 headshot damage is a perfect combination you can go for more headshot damage you know less crit chance or more crit damage it's completely up to you as a player you need to decide on your play style whether or not you can hit headshots but this is the build that i'm very successful with and if i hit my headshots i will normally win the fight and you know hopefully you get an idea from the gameplay and if you watch me live streaming i use this build almost every single time i live stream so you can gauge how you want to play and just look at my statistics and try balance it out the way you want to play but this to me is one of the best ways to do it pause the video if you guys like to see any of the other uh, you know statistics i'm trying to get this i'm trying to speak a bit quicker because i want to make sure we can fit all of these into one video so that's that's the first build uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments which one is your favorite type one two or three for each build that you would like or you like using the most give them a try this is definitely my go-to number one build in the division two right now for pvp on cons on console you might struggle, but I think the next build will be better for you. Right, let's move on to a build that everybody knows and loves. I have posted this previously. The only difference was, uh, if I remember correctly, is that I think I had maybe 1.5 million armor and I had Sawyer's knee pads. Sawyer's knee pads is one of the best, uh, you know, pair of knee pads to wear in the dark zone. If you're getting bullied by other players because you can recharge or charge up damage, which gives you 30% damage after a couple of seconds, which is very, very powerful. It also stops you from getting EMP staggered when you when players try and rush you. I'm sure you guys are aware of this. So I'm not going to talk too much about the knee pads, but this is the build that I've kind of developed it into to suit more for my playstyle. So 1.3 million armor. You can go for less or you can go for more because we want to keep our distance. As you guys know, Spot of Vigilance is one of the best talent combinations in the game. You can use Obliterate, but you would have to charge it up. I don't recommend using that in PvP. This is going to be a critical hit damage long range build. FAL Assault Rifle is one of the best ARs in the game for long range. A close range, I would not use this gun. This is better because of the close hit boxes. You can actually, well, the reticle doesn't bounce around due to accuracy and when you're firing at stability. So it's very, very good from longer ranges. You hit more shots and, you know, each shot benefits you more because it's got quite high base damage, let's be honest. NSYNC is still really good. I see people using Ranger. Don't use Ranger. Nine times out of ten, you, you're not more than 20 meters from the player. Um, but if you are, then you should actually be using like a sniper or a nemesis or something like that. But in sync is still the best in slot. You pull out your shield, that's 30% weapon damage. Make sure you do use this. Crit chance modifications, we want to get up to 60%. It's not like the last build. We want to make sure we're critting all of the time. So crit chance, crit chance, and linked laser pointer. Very, very important. So on the specialization, make sure you guys use technician. It is over here. You don't actually have to have rifles active to utilize it. Uh, just put it on your gun, then save your loadout and change the damage, and then it works. Make sure assault rifle damage is on. We also get artificial hive. We get a very nice amount of uh, skill tiers, plus one from Amped. And we also get more damage to uh, skill proxies, drones, and robotics. That's for PvE though. So 
Let's go into the build in more detail now. You can use whatever secondary weapon or pistol you would like to. We have got a three-piece Providence, which is still very, very good because we get the same as, for example, a headshot damage, which is good for PC. If you don't want to use Providence, you can go for something else. But I get crit chance and crit damage. It's like running another Cheska one piece and a Grouper one piece. It's the same kind of thing, depending on which pieces you have that are better. So, for example, you don't have to run two-piece Providence. You can have... Uh, one piece Providence and then one piece uh, Cheska, which gives you the same uh, bonuses or, or gear brand set bonuses, crit chance and headshot damage. But it depends which ones you have, which ones are better rolled. Maybe use th this, for example, the uh, Providence defense if you have better rolled ones like I have here. So we wanted to get 1.3 million armor with this kind of build because I don't want to be too squishy. You can use glass cannon with this build, but you will get gunned down very, very quickly. And you can actually still like get up close to players and still DPS them because you have got a lot of crit damage on this build. Right. So headshot, crit chance, crit damage, critical hit chance and critical hit damage should be rolled on almost every single piece where possible. Every single modification on this build is critical hit damage. I've got two 12% and one 11.8. Try and get all your crit chance mods on your gun and through your watch. So chest piece it's important to have a Fenris piece crit damage crit chance with spotter it's amplified multiplicative damage by 15 percent very good you can see the rolls here holster another providence with armor crit chance crit damage backpack vigilance very nice remember when you get shot you lose the buff for four seconds so don't forget that guys we've got armor rolled there as well now contractor's gloves i've gone for crit chance again not headshot damage this time then the knee pads we've got uh, fox's prayer which is important because the damage to targets out of cover is one of the best in slot and it's just too but you cannot ignore it it's just too strong crit chance rifle damage i guess you can use a rifle like the named 1886 would be very good the virginian you can do quite a lot of damage in pvp as well so let's look at these statistics i use the decoy and the shield remember this is not the damage shield but the decoy is good because you can sneak up on players in the dz and beam them down very very strong this build is perfect for when you like if you're getting bullied by multiple players in the dark zone you are hidden you can dish out huge amounts of damage with this build it's just a great dps assault rifle build statistics now 58.4 percent crit chance nice balance 145 crit damage now you can get this way higher way higher it's just depending on how you want to run your build like i said before armor damage and damage toss out of cover is still better than just a little bit of crit damage so don't be fooled don't go and run improvised pieces to try to get your crit damage higher than this uh, this still will beam players down very easily so you can pause the video if you like to see any of the other statistics then i think we should move on to the third and final build Last but definitely not least is my favorite SMG build in the game. If you guys did not know, I dropped this a couple of weeks ago. I think this is definitely one of the best uh, combinations you can use for solo PvP, especially in the Dark Zone or in Conflict. It's really up to you. So we have got high amounts of armor regen with this build. The whole idea is to get as much critical hit damage as we can and as much armor regeneration as possible. A lot of the times, uh, running hazard protection in my eyes isn't very beneficial to me because I'm still getting damaged by the skills regardless. And this build mitigates fire almost completely with the amount of regen that we have. So if we quickly take a look with the Cowdy's Mask, uh, putting you know putting into account the damage from it, the critical damage from being within uh, 25 meters, or I think it's something like 20 meters, something like that, uh, we have got just under 160% critical hit damage and 58% crit chance. But have a look at this, 69.2 k armor region which is really really strong and this allows me to survive i put this on in close quarters when i need to survive and this is a very good strafing build and console players should be running their builds exactly like this because you can still one clip players but regen your armor incredibly fast if you fight dps players all you have to do is wiggle slightly wait for them to waste their mag and then beam them down in a heartbeat it's very easy so 1.7 million armor, you'd probably be thinking, should I run more? No, you do not. This is more than enough uh, because we have got the Cowdy's Mask as well, which is going to benefit us quite significantly. Lady Death is still one of the best SMGs in the game. You can use whatever SMG you want with uh, in sync. It's completely up to you. Uh, there's a whole bunch of ones that are good. Say uh, the Apartment's great. The Vector's good, but the Apartment is only better for higher damage builds, which this isn't all the way up there with the high damage builds. Even though we're critting high, it doesn't mean we have high base damage. So I wouldn't recommend that too much. But you can use whatever you want. You can use a Vector. Completely up to you guys. Try with in sync. It's probably the best way to get damage. So let's look at the build now. Like I said before, secondary and pistol, that's completely up to you. 
we've got the Cody's mask. Now within 15, so it's 15 meters, we get 25% critical hit damage. That's why with assault rifle builds, I never recommend using this with assault rifle builds unless you want to get crit chance. But it's not very good from longer ranges. I mean, you'll, nev you'll never really be shooting someone further than 25 meters unless you, you're going to be fighting them. They're going to be sniping you and all of that. So I don't recommend it too much. Uh, from 25 meters plus, you get 25% crit chance. So I guess you could be, you know, trying to get your crit chance back. But it, like I said before, it's not that hard to get crit chance in the game. But anyway, let's move on. So try and optimize this as much as you can because it's very, very powerful. It comes with crit damage and crit chance. So that 25% gives us a huge amount of crits. So remember, guys, that critical damage is per magazine. Your, your crit chance is not per magazine. It is cr uh, per bullet. So... 60% crit chance is 60% chance to crit per bullet, not magazine, just to clarify. So we have got two-piece Golan, one-piece Balston Armory, the obvious uh, Murakami knee pads, Emperor's Guard, and all of these give us armor regeneration. So the one-piece Golan is going to give us two, uh, one status effect and two-piece 1% 1 armor regen. Balston is going to give us um, another 1% armor regen for the one-piece and then the knee pads, another 1%, which gives us all of that region. Because region, uh, it, it, it's based off of your baseline armor value. So it's a percentage base of that value. So if I drop my armor to 1.5, my region would go down significantly. So hopefully you understand from that quick explanation. So Intimidate and Adrenaline Rush, very, very strong. But here's where it gets interesting. So this, a lot of people don't realize, but using a, in, Intimidate and Adrenaline Rush in DPS SMG builds is good. The problem is Adrenaline Rush gets eaten away. And when it gets eaten away, you have to wait a couple of seconds. And let's have a look. It is five seconds for it to actually come, to get both the talents back. So with a build like this, because we're wiggling around, saving our armor, getting it regened, we will be able to survive that five seconds to get adrenaline rush back it's important to make sure you don't lose these buffs because with other builds you can lose them very quickly it's still the best combination though because we have got intimidate which is 40 percent and this is perfect intimidate by the way a 40 percent multiplicative damage very very nice it's one of the best damage chance in the game if not um, so make sure you guys have that so the golden gear we've gone for armor regen and crit damage or crit chance on every single roll Every single modification is going to be critical head damage. So once again, armor regen, crit chance. Now that's up to you to depend how much crit chance you want. As you can see, I've got 58%, so you need to try and get it as close to 60 as possible. Uh, then on the holster, this is where we get our, our baseline damage. Armor regen, crit chance with SMG damage. That is very important. Rather have that than a Grupo, trust me guys, because... 10% SMG damage is better than 15% crit damage because when you're not critting the 40%, you're not critting, you are still going to be doing more damage. Do you understand what I mean? Hopefully you do. So so every bullet basically gives you more damage, not just 60% of them. Well, it's all RNG as well. Who knows? You might crit more than that. It's, it's really RNG, which kind of sucks, but I guess that's just the way these games work. Then the gloves, like I said before, crit damage, armor regen, knee pads, crit damage, then armor regen for the one piece and armor. I've tried this with lower armor values. You need to survive more. You could potentially maybe even take away Cowdy's Mask, put a Grupo if you would like to. It's completely up to you to have another blue. That's another way you could run this, but I like the Cowdy's Mask. I like that one red. It's up to you though, guys. Even put another red really is up to you. So a sticky bomb, or you can use whatever you want. I use an EMP sticky, which is nice for staggering enemies and the damage shield. Statistics are going to be a quite high crit chance, 58, 133, plus another 25 critical hit damage, 70 headshot damage, 6% armor damage. And then you can pause the video and have a look and see whatever you would like to see. 69k armor regen. This build is just an absolute monster in PvP. I love it. You guys know it. It's very, very powerful. Let me know what you think in the comments. Which build is your favorite? I've got a lot of other builds coming out very soon. So make sure you guys do leave a like and subscribe. Click that notification bell because I will be dropping a whole bunch of builds. I've got, I've still got a lot of build ideas, even though the game is currently on its last legs. Uh, hopefully this new update brings us some great content. But like I said before, all these builds are just my best. You guys need to try and adapt them to suit your own play styles. With that being said, please make sure, like, like I always say, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll be seeing everyone in the next video. Peace out, guys.